Shalom, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as always, we'll be talking about our weekly Torah portion, Parshas Tzitzave. More mitzvahs, more commandments about building the temple, the ways uh, how the temple was uh, furnished, uh, about the uh, clothes of the uh, priest and the high priest, but a few moments about that. I will tell you a short story that happened to me a couple of years ago. Uh, the administration of certain Jewish theater, uh, sounds already very strange, uh, approached me and asked that they, if they can borrow some of the Jewish attributes, you know, just for the show, like uh, Talit, Kippot, uh, Yarmulkes, uh, prayer books, and somehow it's like burned me from inside. I was boiling, but somehow I remembered uh, uh, how my parents raised me and to be a nice person, and uh, I nicely, calmly, and politely refused. Why did I refuse? I don't know, but for me, it's very difficult to see all this theatrical about around Judaism, how people like attach themselves, appears to look like a Jew, or put the tzitziot, those things, uh, for the dancers that they will uh, uh, wave during the dance in the Jewish dance. Why? Why you have to pretend to be Jewish, or like Bradley Cooper that put himself a big nose to look like Le uh, Leonard Bernstein. But the truth is, uh, Bradley doesn't bother me so much. What more problematic for me is those Butaforian and theater theatrical people, Jewish people who pretend to be rabbis and go to some non-kosher restaurant to present uh, the wedding or bar mitzvah and entertain the, uh, the crowd and dress up, the, uh, uh, dress up as a Jew. Why do you need to pretend? Just be for real. In our weekly Torah portion, it's the first time that we mention Jewish clothes. No, not strimal and the uh, stockings, no the original Jewish clothes, the clothes that the priests were wearing in the temple, and especially the high priest, with all the opulence, the beauty, and the richness. Uh, and uh, this was very, very impressive clothes. In the Torah says itself that it should be for the honor and for the beauty. And the Rambam, my man, in his, his book, Moren de Buhim, he actually said that the whole opulence in the temple, the whole beauty of the temple, the purpose was it's for the bow effect. When a person come to the temple and see all the beauty, beautiful clothes by, of the priest, the beautiful, magnificent clothes of the high priest, he will say, wow, I want to be part of it. But uh, the, 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 at the end of the description of the clothes, of the high priest clothes, it says that it has to be also projecting the holiness and not not the holiness in the regular understanding something spiritual not no the idea of kadosh in hebrew it's to be dedicated a dedication of the person for example during the wedding when the groom says to the bride i sanctify you you sanctify me we are separated we dedicated one for another so the clothing begins with the person and the holy person, it's not somebody that, uh, I don't know, very spiritual or live in seclusion and dress up uh, with a uh, simple clothes. No, opposite. The clothes represent the person. As well as the person is dedicated to the godly service, the clothes in, the, in its beauty and opulence project it and show it to the world. The same thing about us. I don't know what kind of clothes you're gonna wear. I don't know what, uh, w w uh, what's your style, but please do not pretend. No, no, the holiness begins with the person and the clothes are just to represent it. Thank you very much. Good luck. I see you next week.